I now welcome in Bill Crystal, founder and editor of the Weekly Standard and ABC News contributor. Hello, sir. Hi, Steve. How are you? Good, good. Always great to talk to you. All right, first, let, let's uh, turn our attention to uh, the political scene. And let me ask you, how big a deal do you believe Nikki Haley's endorsement of uh, Marco Rubio is? Endorsements don't usually matter much, especially in a state where everyone has seen the candidates a lot, which I think would be the case by now in South Carolina. But she is a very popular governor, especially among Republicans. Tim Scott, the popular senator in South Carolina, has also endorsed Rubio. Um, they're both pretty conservative. So I think if you're teetering between Rubio and Cruz or Rubio and Trump, this should could give Rubio a couple of points. Uh, yeah, and also Trey Gowdy uh, as well. Uh, but right. a, a couple of points will not win it. If you look at the polls, um, it's Trump. Trump, Trump, if you look at South Carolina, you look at Vegas, you look nationally. Um, are, you res are, you, are you resigned to the fact in your own mind that uh, finally, I might add that little word there, that, that if he wins South Carolina you know, fairly comfortably, that he's going to be the nominee? No, I mean, it's not as if, you know, what, even if he wins comfortably, what will he have, 35% of the vote? You, you still need to get to 50 at some point, and um, he will be ahead, of course, of the others if he wins two and is second in, 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 in one of the first three primaries. I, I'm not, I, I've talked to a couple of people who have seen private polls that are tighter. I don't know why the private polls would be tighter than the public polls. i, I got to think Trump's comments last Saturday night will hurt him about Bush lying uh, the country into war, knowingly lying. Uh, I kind of think they'll be all in the 20s, Trump, Rubio, and Cruz. It'll be a closer result than people expect. If that's the case, I think we have a real three-way race on our hands. I think Bush gets out if he's just in single digits, and uh, Kasich you know, really won't compete much on March 1st. I assume Carson gets out. Yeah. So I think the big thing to watch is this. If we have a 28, 25, 22 result or something, that's one thing. If you're right, if Trump wins 37 and the next person is, you know, Cruz at 18 or something, that's pretty impressive. If you win New Hampshire and South Carolina by, you know, 18 points each or something, you're certainly the leading candidate. Doesn't mean it's over, but you're certainly the favorite. Yeah. Okay. Fair. That, that's fair enough. Yeah. You know what? I, 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 Trump has said a lot of things that have bothered me, but haven't, you know, but, but I've, I've come back. Not that I support him, but I mean, I haven't called for him to leave the race and I'm still not. But I, I, I just I just don't understand the logic. You, you dislike Jeb. You hate Jeb. Even if you hate Jeb. How, I mean, he must believe that George W. Bush was responsible for 9-11 and lied purposely about WMDs. He must, he, he must believe what Nancy Pelosi believes. Well, I remember the, the quote that he was read that provoked his comment was a quote from 2008 about Pelosi, that Bush should have been uh, impeached because right. of Iraq and right. WMDs. And that was, of course, before Jeb was doing anything. So, yeah, I think it is. A, he, I guess he doesn't like the Bush family. He doesn't like W. That's, that's all fair enough. You don't have to. God knows he, it's fair enough to, to have opposed the Iraq war or to oppose it after the fact. But to say that Bush lied us into war and the Bush's whole team did, I suppose, and that's a pretty that that's Michael Moore territory, and I do think that's caused a lot of second thoughts among South Carolinians who are otherwise open to or supportive of Trump. I'm not saying they're all going to leave him. Some of them will have second thoughts and stick with him. Some some maybe weren't going to be with him in the first place. But John McCormick, my colleague, who's down there, does interview a bunch of people last night at a Trump event, at a Trump uh, you know uh, rally. rally. Yeah, and there were people there who were sort of having re rethinking their support. Well, and it, it, this leads me to your column, which has gone viral uh, from the Weekly Standard. Uh, we, at weeklystandard.com, uh, no outrage, and 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 you know this is yeah. this this fits right into it. I mean, especially when it comes to, to Donald Trump, he you know if you if you go back through the litany of things, including McCain and now Bush and this and that, they're usually I mean it's like we're living in a completely different time. It is. It's an unusual moment, and, you know, this happens sometimes rarely in campaigns, but occasionally people get so caught up, and you never know when the spell will break or if it will break. And maybe people have just rethought a lot of things. And maybe the Republican Party and conservative movement of 2008 or 2012 or 1988 or whatever isn't the one that's going to uh, succeed today. But, I, yeah, that column I had was, was a complaint that Bush, Cheney, and others weren't, uh, you know, are you fighting back and right. having their honor, really, yeah. against Trump. Uh, I think it's been a little bit more of a pushback in the last, 24 hours, I saw Pete King from Long Island said something and some others. But I, I'm a little amazed by the kind of establishment types who, 
if you're going to be an establishment, I mean, I'm not really that pro-establishment, but if you're going to be an establishment, you might as well defend yourself. And certainly if you were in government and you helped take the country to war and you thought it was the right thing to do, and I certainly did at the time and still do, really, but, you know, you still, someone someone flanges you that way, you should be a little more indignant than just saying, you know, well, he, he's mistaken or, or I'm not going to directly right. address him or something like that. Two more things. Hillary had another coughing fit yesterday before uh, her, yeah. her, her black audience. And, and this, is, this is severe. You've seen them. We've played them. Uh, where she chokes and chokes and chokes, takes a lozenge, so she says, and still can't. And she talks like this. For uh, I mean, is this this is like the fourth time it's happened. Is this something she's going to have to address? I don't know. I mean, I'm struck by how many people I know, some of them physicians, who are you know a little more concerned than I would have thought that maybe she's not she's not in great shape and maybe she's got you know more serious problems that one should worry about if one's running for a president for four years. But I. You know, I don't like to speculate on that kind of thing, and I suppose we'll see if she gets asked about it and, uh, and what she says. I mean, if it happened at a presidential debate where she was the nominee and she was up against Trump or Cruz or someone, uh, that would be horrific for her. Yeah, to be fair, she's presumably giving a lot of speeches, so this happens once every 20 or 30 or 40. It can happen to anyone, but I... I, I you know, look, I mean, this is an issue with Reagan. It's an issue with uh, any candidate, uh, especially one who's, you know, in, in his or her 60s or certainly right, 70s. Right. Uh, I mean, Sanders is 74, so he can't exactly run as the youth again, youthful <laughs> candidate against Hillary. No. And so that's that's a bit of a problem. I do think in some indirect way it probably does, you know, make people think, um, well, it just never looks good in any walk of life if you look like you're not in totally great shape. I'm right. not either. So, you know, none of us is, I suppose. But, but having a coughing fit when you're running for president, yeah, isn't isn't uh, isn't the best thing. Obviously. Okay, one more. Obama now today, after being asked about his uh, uh, filibustering of Alito in '06 yesterday, and ba basically not acknowledging it, uh, not saying anything in direct answer today, he has Josh Ernest say he regrets it for various reasons. Uh, cowardice that he didn't address it yesterday himself maybe he was just surprised he got asked yesterday i don't know that is kind of pathetic to have your press secretary say you regret it and not saying it yourself and it's also convenient that he now regrets it seven years later when finally there's a moment that's somewhat analogous i don't think any i personally couldn't care less whether obama did or didn't do it in the sense that i think republicans are totally justified in doing what they're doing it's nice to be able to say that schumer and obama are being hypocrites but honestly the, the republicans the one thing i'm a little worried about is they need to make the substantive argument about why an Obama appointee would lead the court and the Constitution in the wrong direction. Right. It can't just be kind of, well, you did it so we can do it. You right. know, that's, that's okay for a start. But I think they want, they, the Republicans should engage the constitutional argument. I think they can win it. Yeah, I agree. Bill Crystal, always great to talk to you, sir. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. All right, folks, we're taking your calls next live, 877-NEWSMAX, 877-639-7629.